It's mailbag time here on the Ravens Rundown. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. You have questions. You're in luck because I have answers. And you may be wondering, how do I get to be a part of these mailbag shows? Well, we do them when we go live on the channel. So if you subscribe, which doesn't cost you a thing, then you can join us for our live shows, be notified when we go live, and then get your questions in and answer them in real time, whether it's uh, using the hashtag Ravens or Super Chatting. We got you covered either way. Subscribe for free. Be a part of our mailbag. So let's get started with uh, our first question. Dana writes in, hashtag Ravens. I feel like the new OC will be a head coach in two years. Remember, I said it, LOL. Uh, Dana Kennedy, thanks for the uh, question. Todd Munkin actually has been uh, a head coach uh, previously. He was at uh, Southern Miss. And uh, so we'll see if uh, Todd gets the chance to be uh, in an NFL head coach. But I got to tell you, I have been a big fan of Todd Munkin for a very long time. I remember back in the day when he was the uh, offensive coordinator for the Oklahoma State Cowboys working under Mike Gundy. And, I mean, the thing that he did, remember Oklahoma State, if you're a college football fan and if you follow the Big 12 Conference, then you're very well aware that Oklahoma State historically has been one of the better offensive programs in college football. And Todd went in there and he elevated that already good offense. They were doing stuff that we'd never seen Oklahoma State do before. They were running the diamond formation and doing all sorts of stuff. And then he goes on and most recently was at the University of Georgia. And, I mean, he, he turned Stetson Bennett, of all people, into a fourth-round pick. I mean, that's, that's God's work right there. <laughs> I mean, uh, just incredible what he did to turn Stetson Bennett into that level and winning two national titles. Todd Munkin is awesome. And he was the guy I told you about for a very long time that I said I wanted to see the Ravens hire as their next OC. And I think he's going to do some things we've never seen before with this Ravens offense. If he leaves in two years to be a head coach, that's a good problem to have. I'll take that over what the Ravens had the last uh, several years with Greg Roman. Thank you, Daniel. Brandon Tillman writes in, would you trade Patrick Queen to the Chargers for Joey Bosa? Uh, hell yeah, I would. Chargers aren't making that trade, though. They, they love Joey Bosa. Um, I mean, is he his brother Nick? No, uh, but, but Joey's fantastic. Uh Chargers aren't making that move. It sounds like a pipe dream. Um, maybe Madden will accept it, but uh, that's not happening. Uh, Joey Bosa, that'd be fun to have uh, with uh, the Ravens, but that move ain't happened. But Brandon, nice idea and thought. Flock Fandom says, hashtag Ravens, is there any chance we could trade for DeAndre Hopkins? So this situation is pretty fascinating with DeAndre Hopkins, isn't it? Here's a guy, DeAndre Hopkins, who... For months, we all assumed was on the trading block that would be done in Arizona with the situation that was unfolding of Kyler Murray being out for most of this upcoming season, a new regime coming in with their general manager and head coach, and that did DeAndre Hopkins, who's at the back end of his prime now, that's not an insult, that's just a fact, he's still a very good football player, but it's on the back end. Would he really want to be a part of a rebuild there in Arizona? And all of us said, no, probably not. And then, you know, we, we hear him say, well, I don't want to trade. And, I mean, I think that it's a, it's a tricky situation because you need to find a team that can afford to pay DeAndre Hopkins uh, what he feels like he's worth. Um, and does he want to leave? Does he want to leave – the glorious views of Scottsdale, Arizona. That's where I would, I, I don't know where he lives in the Phoenix area. Fire him, I'd be living in Scottsdale. I'm a big fan of Scottsdale. Um, but I don't know. So is it worth it to him to go play for a contending team but take a pay cut? So there's a whole lot of factors involved here. I would lean towards no, but I'm not completely shutting the door on that possibility. Should the Ravens trade for DeAndre Hopkins? What do you think? Why for yes, in for no. Should they make a move? Tell me what you think in the comments section. Why for yes, in for no, if the Ravens should trade for DeAndre Hopkins or not. Welcome back, Dana. Good to see you again. Dana writes, I don't think we need a, another running back. We need 
other things. Dana, uh, you make a very good point. You look at the running back room for the Baltimore Ravens right now. Um, I like J.K. Dobbins. I thought he had a nice bounce back year last season in 2022 uh, in the back half when he kind of tightened things up uh, and made sure he was good to go. And then he was in good shape. Uh, he looked a lot better. Gus Edwards is not a bad number two back. Um, could the running back room improve with like an Austin Eckler or something like that? Yeah, it could. But I think you have other things to address that would be more important. And R- Lamar is like another running back in your running back room too. And Lamar's as good and as powerful and elusive as any runner in the National Football League. So... Uh, Dana, I see what you mean. It's not a need, but it wouldn't hurt if you have some other potential options to get a little bit better as far as that goes, Dana. Adam78, uh, a very loyal commenter to the Ravens rundown. Adam78 is. Adam, good to see you again. Hashtag Ravens, since Washington drafted Emmanuel Forbes in the first round, do you believe they are willing to trade Kendall Fuller? If so, trade Patrick Queen for him. I see where you're going with this, Adam, and it makes a lot of sense to an extent, okay? Let me start with the Kendall Fuller idea. Kendall Fuller, I think, is one of the most underrated players in the National Football League. I think he's had a very good career. His first stint in Washington was good, goes to Kansas City, wins a Super Bowl, was a big part of that defense, goes back to Washington. He's been solid uh, throughout his his tenure. But here's where I differ with you, Adam. Kenneth Fuller is significantly older than Patrick Queen is. Um, I'm not dealing doing that deal straight up. Okay. If, we're, if the Ravens are going to do that deal, I need something from the, the commies. I need a little bit more than just a player for player deal. If you're going to make this deal happen, I got to get something a little bit more than just that because, I mean, When you factor in these trades, remember, you're not just trading based on the players that they are now, but also their potential. And the potential of Patrick Queen, the ceiling for the next several years, I think is much higher than Kendall Fuller's is. Um, So I need a little bit more than just a player-for-player deal. I'm going to need a little extra as far as that goes. But Adam, it's an interesting idea for sure. Mr. Lewis writes, should the Ravens trade for Quinian Williams uh, of the uh, New York Jets? I still remember when uh, he was at Alabama and they were playing Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl. And he called out Kyler Murray and said that Kyler Murray hasn't faced a defense like Alabama in the SEC. And then Nick Saban looked at him, deadpan, and all of a sudden, Williams just straight up shut up and didn't have anything more to say. Um, but he's had a, a pretty decent career. It sounds like the Jets are shopping him around. Uh, you look at Baltimore, they, they have some, you know, question marks when it comes to their front seven. Williams might be a decent fit, potentially, for what the Ravens are looking for. Price tag might be a little bit high, and we've seen that the Jets, you know, aren't necessarily the easiest to make deals with with how long that Aaron Rodgers situation took, but I'm not opposed. Uh, certainly can have a conversation about that, uh, Mr. Lewis. Thanks for the question there. Name a player the Ravens should trade for. Is it Williams? Is it Austin Eckler? Who comes to mind? Is it Kendall Fuller? Let me know in the comments section. What do you think? Who's a player that comes to mind that you'd like to see the Ravens make a move for? Let me know. Random guy on YouTube. You are not a random guy in our eyes here at the Ravens Rundown. Uh, is there a possibility we could get Jair Alexander in a Patrick Queen trade? Uh, possible. Uh, I mean, I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head how the money works comparing the two, but uh, I mean, now yeah, there, there could be a possibility that we could see something similar in that sense. Uh, like I said, I'm not exactly sure what Alexander's money situation is, but I wouldn't completely rule out that possibility. Ravens fan for life writes, could the Ravens still bring back Marcus Peters? Absolutely they could. Uh, That is a possibility for sure, Ravens fan for life, that the Ravens could make a move to bring back Marcus Peters. We heard from John Harbaugh earlier in the week when he was asked if 
the move to sign Rakia Sin closed the door on Marcus Peters, and he said, no, it doesn't close the door, that we're still open to having very talented players in this football team. Marcus Peters, he's older than Rakia Sin. I think Rakia Sin slides in to be your number two corner uh, this upcoming season, but Marcus Peters, I think if he's your number three or your number two and a half corner, you're in great shape. Marcus Peters has had his fair share of injuries, so you have to wonder how much his availability will be. But also, think about this. Marcus Peters, if you told him, like, hey, you're going to be like our two and a half, number three corner of some sorts, you just tell him to go play ball, go do his thing, go be that uh, guy that's just great in turnovers, that's just a menace out there, you know, uh, don't worry about playing the bend, don't break thing. Just go out there and, and, and ball out. And that could be a very good role for Marcus Peters because although he gives up the big plays from time to time, he is very good at creating turnovers. And if you have Rakyasin and, and Marlon take the number one and number two receivers on a team and go let Marcus Peters just kind of float and, and maybe he's like a, a three high safety sort. Uh, of role of sorts for Marcus Peters. That could be very interesting as far as I'm concerned. Should the Ravens bring back Marcus Peters? Bring him in, uh, back, re-sign him. Let us know what you think in the comment section. S for sign, P for pass. If you'd like to see Marcus Peters back in Baltimore, let us know. S for sign, P for pass. A lot of fun uh, doing this mailbag, answering your questions. This comes from our live shows that we do from time to time on the channel. If you subscribe now for free today, then you'll know when we go live and you can be a part of our mailbags. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. If the Ravens make a move, you know we're going to be on top of it here on the channel. Subscribe now for free. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. YouTube.com slash Ravens TV. Baltimore World uh, with the hashtag Ravens writes, can Gus Edwards get back to Gus the bus? Uh, Baltimore World, that's a, that's a fair question. And here's the way I look at this, um, Gus, I think he kind of took a little bit of a step back coming back from injury. He didn't quite look like the guy we saw prior to the injury. And there's a part of me that's afraid that that Gus that we saw pre-injury is done for, that that Gus uh, is over. Now, the Gus we see right now, uh, you can work with that. He's not a bad player, but you could argue that his best days of football might be behind him. So we'll see what he does to put the work in and how he comes to camp and everything. But uh, I think it's still a long road ahead for him to try to get back to being the player he once was. Last question from Baltimore Bussin, uh, showing off the guns. Nice gun show there. How will Lamar Jackson do in Todd Munkin's new offense? So kind of like what we talked about at the top of the show. Think about this, okay, with Lamar Jackson and this Todd Munkin offense. Todd Munkin, I think the number one thing that you can say about Todd Munkin as an offensive coordinator, whether it was in college football or in the National Football League, is that he has an impressive ability to adapt to his personnel and to get the most out of what he has to offer. And I think that he and Lamar are going to be a nice marriage because of what he can get out of Lamar Jackson. Uh, I think that they're going to pass the football more than we've seen in quite some time. You have a good receiving core. Um, watch out. The thing I want to see from Todd Munkin in this new offense, compared to what we saw from Greg, Greg Roman the last couple of years, is Todd Munkin needs to get Lamar to not run as much. We need to see Lamar, especially as he gets older, uh, become a little bit more of a pocket passer so he's not getting hit quite as much. Um, and that could pay off in the long run. So, yes, uh, I think Lamar will do very well. I think Todd will adapt to Lamar's strengths, but also he needs to protect him as well. We'll see how that goes. Predict the Ravens record in 2023. Schedule and all that out Thursday. What do you think the Ravens record will be? Tell us in the comments section and let us know. 